Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, March 21st, 2019. Uh, we had a full moon last night. It was the super moon in Libra. Um, we also had the spring equinox yesterday, so winter is officially over. Welcome to spring, everybody. I hope everyone had a great day. Wednesday, a great hump day. So this is a general energy reading for today. Now, just because it's coming through today doesn't mean it has to resonate today. It could be something that happened uh, in the past. It could be happen something that's coming on down the pipeline for you, or it could be something that doesn't resonate with you at all. At all. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, this is just, this is not specific to anything. This is not love specific. This is not science specific. This is not career specific. This is just whatever spirit wants to discuss with us today. Yeah. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. I would be very happy to do a personal reading for you. All the information is in the description box below. Also, I am planning on doing happy hour tonight. So if you have any questions, if you'd like to ask a single question, you are welcome to uh, make payment in advance um, to get yourself on the list. Uh, you can use my PayPal account during happy hour. All readings are, uh, single question readings are discounted. So instead of $30, they are $20, yes? You can use the PayPal link on my home screen in the top right banner that says PayPal, or you can use my email address, divineconversations2711 at gmail.com, um, and just make payment and I will put you on the list. Yeah, that will be tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, yeah? All right, guys. So, without further ado, let's get good. Let's get to it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Thursday, March twenty first, twenty nineteen. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm seeing pink, unconditional love. I do feel like that has something to do with spring. Um, you know, now that spring is officially here, there's a lot of love pouring in from the universe, from the divine now. That's not to say that there isn't love pouring in during the winter, but specifically what this, what this feels like is, you know, the 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 energetic push for things to start growing sprouting trees growing leaves flowers coming up and blooming and all that stuff and people even yeah people just you know coming out of their hibernation stages and whatnot and animals emerging from their own hibernation stages and like the world is coming or at least here we're in the northern hemisphere where it's springtime um, the world is coming back to life, yeah? <laughs> Which is cool. Okay, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. March 21st, 2019. All right, here we go. Thursday, March 21st. Best messages, please, Spirit. Okay, three of cups so far. Spring has sprung. Nine of Pentacles. Ooh, Ten of Cups. Thursday, March 21st. Best messages, please, Spirit. Okay, uh oh. All right. Overall energy, we have the Four of Wands. Well, this is beautiful. All right, so already what the Four of Wands is speaking to is stability, okay? Coming out of this winter season, coming into spring with a greater form of foundation. There is a lot of work, a lot of work that has been done over the past few winter months. 
lots of purging, but specifically lots of healing, okay? It's one thing to just purge and like experience a bunch of like, you know, hard or, or sad or rough emotions. It's another thing to purge and then heal and then and, and heal through that purging, you know, um, like the energies come up and as the energies are coming up, you're like on another level, you're down there like fixing and repairing and, and patching up the holes, but not just patching up the holes, fortifying the holes, fortifying, fortifying the foundation, making it stronger where these points of weakness have been um, uh, 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 brought to your attention and that's not to say you're a weak person it's just to say there was there we all have certain spots that are sensitive or um we uh, uh, uh not as strong or firm in foundation or structure um our weaknesses you know we all have our our you know, situations or our parts of ourselves that could use improvement use fortifying and that's what we've done for the most part, that's beautiful. Okay, so that's all what the Four of Wands is saying there, right? So then we get into here. We have the Nine of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. So, um, uh, I don't really think this is saying anyone is going to become single. Of course, anything is possible, but that's not the strongest thing I'm picking up here. The strongest thing I'm picking up here is in your solitude, in your singlehood, okay, in your bachelor or bachelorette status, um, represented by the Nine of Pentacles, there has been quite a bit of work when it comes to balancing body, mind, and spirit, Three of Cups. But that's not the only thing the Three of Cups is saying. The Three of Cups is also speaking to a time of celebration. Congratulations are in hand, in a way. Um, socializing or celebrating or coming together. The Three of Cups also talks about union, okay? Not only union between body, mind, and spirit, but union between soulmates, twin flames, um, uh, uh, divine connections, divine partners, life partners, whatnot. You have the Ten of Cups here. Emotional fulfillment, ultimate emotional fulfillment, family life, status, uh, family status, whatnot. Um, the, the biggest thing is, that I'm fa feeling here is the work that we've done over the past winter months that has really set us up to be fortified us and set us up to be stable, independent, grounded, autonomous, master of your own domain in a way. Um, it's really set us up to be an individual, to be safe and comfortable in our own skin, on our own two feet, on our own has brought us into balance between body, mind, and spirit, which is cause for celebration, and now is helping lead us, guide us, spirit says, towards greater emotional fulfillment. Now, for some of you, for some of you, in the next coming months, I am feeling that, you know, you're going to reach some sort of union with someone. Um, I would say it feels like towards summer, you know, uh, things will really start to noticeably be changing within like some sort of relationship between you and someone else um or, or whatnot but if, if a relationship is not like your thing like if you're already in a relationship ten of cups could be talking about um maybe a family starting or receiving or being in, in some sort of position that is um that lends to emotional fulfillment. That is almost like a dream come true, I wanna say, in a sense, okay? Which is great, which is really great. And the other thing about the Nine of Pentacles is that it's speaking to rewards for work well done, okay? The, the, being in the Nine of Pentacles energy is a very rewarding energy. Yes, it can be a solitary one, but you've worked really hard on your own, so you have the opportunity or the, um, I guess you could say the privilege, or the opportunity, I guess the opportunity is the best word, to really reap those benefits of the work you've done on your own, for yourself, by yourself. And it's not to say that, you know, you, goodness, I'm getting all tongue-tied. 
we are still in Mercury retrograde. That doesn't go in direct until the 28th. But anyway, um, it's not that, you know, you were weak in the sense that you had to do, you, you did this all on your own because you didn't want to deal with anybody else, blah, blah, blah. You couldn't deal, you had to do it on your own. That's what I'm trying to say. You had to do it on your own because it was work for yourself. No one else could do it for you, all right? And it looks like congratulations are definitely in order. Now, we do have two more cards that have come out face down. And one of them, I think, is the Two of Swords. Let's see. Yep, Two of Swords. Oh, and the Page of Swords in reverse. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, the biggest thing that I'm getting from the Two of Swords with the Page of Swords in reverse is that it, leaving something behind, not looking out, not seeking, not wanting to communicate, nor maybe not being able to communicate. And the, the biggest thing that I'm trying to figure out right now is whether this is you, as in the viewer, or at least the person that I was speaking to about this energy here with the Nine of Pentacles, Tools, Three of Cups, Ten of Cups, all that stuff, and the Four of Wands, or if this is someone else. I feel like this is someone else here. Two of Swords, Page of Swords in reverse. The biggest thing that I'm, I'm getting with the Page of Swords is not being willing to communicate. That could be because they're not, they're not really capable of communicating effectively right now. But this could be you. This really could be you. So while you are feeling great, you've, you're, you're single and independent, you're coming into balance. You, I mean, these are both, I, I didn't even recognize this before, but the Four of Wands and the Three of Cups are both union cards, okay? The Four of Cups, I'm sorry, the Four of Wands officially speaks of, can speak to marriage. And so it looks like someone is ready for some, some sort of union, is ready for some sort of marriage. And yet, you have this Two of Swords and this Page of Swords. I'm, I, this is completely throwing me for a loop, you guys. I don't know where this energy is coming from. And quite frankly, I can't tell who it is. Is it you or is it someone else? I really want to get into clarification. We may do some extra clarification here just so I can get a sense of where this energy is coming from. Because what I go, okay, so what, what it could be, what I'm feeling here is it could be that you are set, poised, ready for union. You've done a lot of work on yourself. You've really taken this time to uh, get into greater alignment with yourself. To set yourself up for achieving this Ten of Cups to your ultimate wish fulfillment here. But you're blocking some sort of union with someone. This okay, so what this feels like is a situation in which you are open to union, you want it, you know you want it, and you've been working towards it without any sort of attachment, or so you think, because you're like, this is like an energy of, I want union, but I want union with anyone else except for that person. Oh... Yeah, that's not detachment at all, you guys. <laughs> if you're truly detached from the situation, then you are not concerned about where this divine union, this divine partnership aligns, or, I'm, or I should say whom, with whom it aligns. That doesn't mean that you may not necessarily, that you may, let's say you are aware that it could entirely be this one person, okay. That's cool, but you're still dealing with a lot of pain surrounding that. Okay, that's understandable. Only thing you can do in terms of that is 
continue to remain detached from the outcome, but to work on relieving yourself of the karma. Because that pain is just the karma flaring back up in your face. And you could say that when the karma, when, when the pain comes through, the karma, it's being shown to you by the universe that you're still holding this karma and you gotta release it. That could be, yeah, you could really see that as what purging has been too, a way of releasing karma. You don't have to die, cross over, go through your life review to do something about your karma. You're supposed to do something about it down here while you're here, okay? Ideally, you're supposed to work it out with the individuals involved. That's not always possible or that's not always ideal. So what do you do to release the karma? Well, first and foremost, you face it. And you mentally, verbally, in the sense that you just say it out loud, even though they may not be right in front of you, you could write it out in a letter or you could actually have a conversation with the person. But if that's not possible, if having the conversation with the person is not possible, you can just say, hey, this isn't working. I'm sorry for what I've done. I forgive you for what you've done, but I release this and I release you with love and gratitude. You go your way, I go mine. And we can let this go. Now, I got that from Dolores Cannon. So I highly recommend, if you haven't checked her out yet, go right ahead and do so, because she's amazing. But it's that that we're talking about here. Two of Swords, Page of Swords in reverse. Someone doesn't want to forgive. This could be you. This could also be the other person. It could also be both of you. And look, this is more, this is more than just your twin flame, your, your, your soulmate, your karmic partner, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle. This is more than that. Okay, this is anyone that has ever hurt you or you've ever hurt throughout any and all lifetime. It's time to get off the hamster wheel, you guys. All right, I'm gonna do some extra clarification just to get a little bit more on this Two of Swords and the Page of Swords in reverse. And then we're going to go into the official clarification section, okay? So um, I'm using the Tarot Illuminati deck for this. And then we're going to, when we get into the actual uh, overall clarification section, I'm going to use the Epic Tarot. But I really just want to clarify this Two of Swords and Page of Swords. The Page of Swords being in reverse. Let's give it one more shuffle. because it feels a little out of place and yet it's not. And you know what, this could be what the pink energy was that I was seeing as, wow, okay. So as I was channeling, I, I told you guys I was seeing pink energy, unconditional love, um, love from the universe, you know, helping springtime get sprung, right? Well, You've hibernated over the winter months, over the winter season, and you've done a lot of work, integral work on yourself, which is beautiful. But now that you're emerging from your hibernation, you still have this stuff to face with the other people around you. Let's see, let's get some extra, just some clarification on these two, please, Spirit. Two of Swords and the Page of Swords in reverse. Please help us understand what this is. What is this, Spirit? Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, with the Eight of Swords. I think I got it. I think I understand what's going on here. Um, okay, so it's slowly emerging out of this mental prison here. Whatever this situation is with these, whoever, whomever this represents, for you, like the, some people that you need to be communicating with. 
I mean, the Page of Swords is about communication, but it's also, um, it's almost, it's, it's, it's direct and to the point, very blunt, can be kind of immature in execution. Um, uh, but when it's reversed, it's either no communication or just petty, childish stuff, right? But that, this feels mostly like no communication because of this Two of Swords that's here. But at, with the Eight of Swords that's underneath the Clarifying deck and the Knight of Pentacles that have come up, what, this, what that has come out, what this is saying to me is you're going to be slow. You need to slowly but surely, piece by piece, make your way out of the mental prison. You've done the internal work for the most part. or And I'm not even going to say for the most part because always there's still more work to do. There's still more ways to grow and to heal and to expand and to ascend. But you've done a sufficient amount of work on yourself internally. And now it's time to reach another level in the external with the people around you. Now, on the other hand, if this is not you, okay, this is someone that you're connected with that maybe has stopped watching you, um, maybe has stopped focusing on you, or this could be you also, maybe you've stopped doing that. But it's because of an indecisiveness with this Two of Swords energy. They can't make heads, of t heads or tails of the situation. So it's an energy of, I need to just disconnect from this completely because this is driving me crazy. Little do they know, I mean, disconnecting is going to be good for them, yes, because like you have done, you needed to disconnect and focus on you. Eventually, it's going to circle back around. If they haven't disconnected, they're still, uh, no, well, okay, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say... They're caught up in their head about it too, but there's some slow and steady progress that's going to help alleviate the situation. What I'm seeing in the Knight of Pentacles is just slow progress towards reconciliation for some of you. And with this Page of Swords in reverse, I feel like someone would rather not communicate than say something that they're really going to regret later. That could, could be you or it could be them. And to be quite honest, this could be, this top row here could be them as well. It could be both of you, all right? Yeah, that does feel like a difficult situation. <sighs> Alrighty, we're gonna get, we're gonna get clarifying now. Official clarification. So we're gonna start with the top row here, three of pentacles, I'm sorry, nine of pentacles, three of cups, 10 of cups. This bottom row here is really confusing. It's like, it's throwing me off a little bit because I really don't, I really cannot get a solid read on which direction it's coming from. Which leads me to believe that it's probably both of you. If you're connecting with someone or if you've been connected with someone, if you've been dealing with someone, if you've had somebody on your mind or something like that. And you're like, in, especially if you have someone on your mind and you're not in a position to be like constantly seeing, you're not checking up on them, you're, you're not connected with them in any way, um, they can't, you're like, you're not connected with them on social media or in some, in some plat on some platform or in some way in which they can just pop up randomly, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, you're not checking in on them, you're not watching them, you're not, sitting around curious as to whether or not what they're doing every day, all the time anymore. You're just focused on you. You're doing what it is you need to do. You're staying disciplined. You're, you're working forward. You're moving forward with your life, focused on your healing, focused on your manifestations, focused on your pentacles, whatever. And somehow this person just keeps sneaking in 
to the back of your mind or something like that. And I'm gonna say you're most, that's most likely happening for them too. That would be the universe kind of reminding you of each other. Potentially saying, hey, it's not quite over yet. And it doesn't matter who that, it, it, this could just be someone, like a friend or a family member that you had some sort of argument with or a falling out with, blah, blah, blah. You know? This is not specific to anything, so please take what resonates. Okay. One more shuffle here, and then we're going to get to the top row. Nine of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Ten of Cups. Just a bit of clarification, please, spirit. <laughs> The lovers. Well, this is a romantic situation, I guess. The high priestess. Well, well, well. Okay, we have the six of wands. I'm sorry, the six of swords underneath the deck here. We have the four of wands that came out, and I was wondering if it was going to come out again, but it came out in reverse. We have the two of wands. I'm sorry, the two of, the two of, the high priestess. <laughs> oh, star-crossed lovers. Literally, star-crossed lovers. We have the lovers and we have the star that came out on top of the lovers, but the star is crossed. It's sideways. Okay, guys. So, for some of you... Wow. All right, so some of you have chosen not to go into union with someone. Four of Wands in reverse on the Nine of Pentacles with the High Priestess on top of that. I'm hearing that you've chosen union with yourself first and um, ultimately what that means is whoever it is, this is like the ultimate form of detachment really because when you're, what you're saying here, at least from what I heard in you've chosen union for yourself first and what that led me to see was that you are not in alignment with this person anymore. You haven't been for a long time. Whoever this person from the past is that you, that, you know, you thought you wanted to come into greater alignment with, you thought you were in alignment with, blah, 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 whatever, however that resonates for you. You've chosen greater alignment with yourself and the universe, which has effectively left you open for anyone to come in that is in, in, in alignment with you that would serve your highest good. Now, of course, it could be still that same person ultimately, but Okay, see, this is really this is really tricky and this is really confusing. Because what I'm picking up here is that you've chosen alignment with yourself first and foremost. That's great. But now you're having to really work on being okay with the fact that should things work out in this way, the person that comes in that is in greater alignment with you, that is your divine counterpart that turns out to be your life partner, whatnot, whatever, could be this exact same person that you've walked away from, that you've given the boot. You're having to come to terms with that. And that is why you have the lovers with the star crossing it. With the star, the crossed, the star crossed sideways. Um, to me, that's saying your wishes can come true, but are you willing to allow that to happen? Or are you gonna still gonna control it and say, no, it absolutely cannot come from that person? 
So that's the healing that's coming through here. The eight star does represent healing. It also does represent um, wish fulfillment. So for some of you, it is supposed, it is destined to be, or it is meant to be someone from the past that you may not want anything to do with any longer. But there's deep healing that's happening surrounding that situation. My advice to you would be remain detached. The Four of Wands in reverse with the High Priestess. There's still learning happening. You guys, this is a really confusing reading. It's really kind of all over the place. Okay, I want to get to the clarification now of the Two of Swords, the Page of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, and the Eight of Swords here. Clarification, please, Spirit. Overall, what is this? The Five of Swords? No, the Five of Cups. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. <sighs> All right. Underneath... <laughs> Underneath the deck, you have the King of Wands. And I want this King of Wands energy to be a good thing. I do, but it's, I don't know. I just, I, I can't, feeling this out is so weird. Ooh, the King of Pentacles. Oh goodness, the Ten of Cups, the Three of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. But the Ten of Pentacles has come out in reverse. Okay, well, what the Ten of Pentacles in reverse with the Ten of Cups upright is speaking to is the emotions are getting there, but the physicality of it hasn't quite happened yet. But it hasn't been it hasn't quite been grounded yet in the physical. We got the Ten of Cups twice. Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Um, okay. Yeah, so, and then there's also this Five of Cups here. Dealing with the heartbreak. The Ten of Pentacles, to me, it, it represents the lessons learned in life. It represents completing the lesson in some cases, when, it, when, that's, when that's the topic at hand. And here... The emotions are the lesson. So who, for whomever this is, that is represented by this Two of Swords upright and the Page of Swords in reverse with the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords. Either this is you or this is the other person that you've been connecting with. But there's whoever it is, is still learning the emotional lessons here. Stealing with, still dealing with the regret and the remorse and the shame and maybe even some regret, uh, 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 rejection. Rejection that maybe they've never really felt, never really experienced before. This could be a situation in which the, the rejection has come back to bite them in the ass. Maybe they're feeling this type of rejection for the first time. We have the Three of Pentacles with the King of Pentacles and underneath the deck is the King of Wands. So there's some, okay, yeah, I get it. For the most part, you guys, this is the masculine side of the situation, potentially. The, for the majority of you, this is probably the masculine side of the situation. And it could even be the masculine energies within you, okay? Um, but if it's, if, if like we'll say, and <clears throat> if you're not dealing with someone romantically, you just have drama with people that you know, you've been really close with or whatnot, whatever, this was you, or this is you, up here. And down here, this is them, for the most part. It also could be you. I know this is so confusing. I hope this is making sense for you guys, because I'm even having trouble keeping it all together. But it's starting to make, it, it makes sense. I do feel like down here, this energy is both of you. However, the person on the other side, the opposite side of the equation, has more of this energy than you do. I feel like you've worked out of most, worked most of, most of this out. 
and at this point, if you are in the in the energy of you don't necessarily want to reconnect with this person, you don't necessarily want to reconcile or come into union with them or whatnot, it's mainly because you've been doing your work and maybe you're perceiving them to have not been doing the work or if they have been doing the work, they haven't really said anything to you about it. They haven't communicated with you. So as far as you know, this is dead over and done and you're really just accepting that and moving on for them to all of a sudden just pop up back in your life later on. <sighs> this person here, look, that's a risky move. I'm not gonna lie, that's a risky move. If you wanna be in someone's life, if you wanna be a part of their life, you can't, well, you can, you absolutely can, you have free will, but it's risky for you to completely cut them off, right? And, you know, there's all kinds of drama and blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, and disappear, ghost them, block them, cut them off, cut off all lines of communication. Now you see them moving on with their lives, so you start doing your own work, and now here you are with yourself, working on yourself, self-mastery here, three of pentacles, knight of pentacles, slow and steady moves the race, working on your finances, manifesting and grounding yourself with the king of pentacles, and working on your self-confidence with the king of wands, to then show up in their life months to years later, talking about, hey, let's pick up where we left off. Excuse me? Like, come on, you, you see how risky that is, right? Instead of in communicating with the person, as you're going through this process, but then here's spirit, but what if they lack the confidence? All right, so you don't, you don't, have the necess you don't necessarily have the confidence to communicate as you're going through the process, okay. And I guess I'm getting my own, my like my own ego is coming into play here, but I'm just thinking about this logically. It's like, that's risky. But you know, at the same time, if you two go in your, your separate ways, right? And you allow the universe to realign you, you never know. At that moment that you two come back into alignment or you cross paths again, maybe you're in a better position to talk to each other. Okay. All right. Slow and steady wins the race. Knight of Pentacles. But whoever this is, is really dealing with learning about the emotional side of life. Dealing with their own emotions. Dealing with the emotions that they have during this process that they may have ran from. That they may have hidden from, disconnected from denied well this is this sure is a rebirthing process don't you think <laughs> right in time for spring all right so we're gonna get into the oracle gut section now and the unicorns want to come out so some oracle guidance from the unicorns here for this I, can we call the 21st the full first full day of spring what time was the equinox actually, like what time did it actually happen yesterday on the 20th? Because I wanted to say the unicorns wanted to come out on this first full day of spring. And I know the equinox was on the 20th and now it's the 21st, but this is actually, I think the first full 24 hours. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The unicorns want to come out to play. <laughs> Um, look, uh, patience, I guess patience is needed. I should have said this before. Patience is needed here. Just don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Continue on your path. Let them do what they're gonna do and let the universe handle it. But you see, okay, yeah, I should have said this. I'm gonna, okay. The 
And now I've lost what I was going to say. The universe is aligning this for you. And that's why you need to just focus on your life, focus on you and healing yourself and, and, and your, your life and let go of the expectation, let go of the drama, yes, but let go of the expectation, let go of the attachment, let go of the pain, the hurt, the karma, work on that, okay? All right, unicorns, best message, please. Well, look at you, looky here. Looky here. Aren't you just some cheeky fellows? Friendship. Seek out your soul family. Surround yourself with positive people. Spend more time associating. And to be quite honest, this could be friendship with that person. That's what I'm picking up here. Work on being friends with this person. What if I don't want to be friends with this person? That's your choice. There's nothing wrong with that. But ask yourself why you don't want to be friends with them. Like, what if they did change? What if, you know, you did cross paths with them and you had enough of a view into the person that they are in that moment to see, oh, wow, they are very much a different person. Would you at least consider reconciling or allowing them back into your life? And if not, why not? They really, ha I mean, I'm not saying that you just have to let them back in 100% willy nilly, like boop, that's it. We're back, we're back to where we started, no. But if there's sufficient evidence to say, oh wow, there's, this person really has grown, why not start over from there? Okay. Now let's close the reading with something from the Crystal Mandala deck. Best message, please. <laughs> there we go. Okie dokie. What do we have here? Card number 37, Goddess Tara and Tibetan Quartz, her eye ever open. 37 boils down to a 10. There sure quite are a few 10s here. 10 of cups twice, 10 of pentacles. Hmm. <laughs> okay. 37. We bring you the empowerment of her eye ever open. The divine protection around you is absolute and complete. Your simple request for the universal mother to watch out for you and to protect what has meaning for you allows you to live your life, do your work, and know the most powerful one is caring for your well-being on all levels. You can trust, be free from worry, and remain open to the world with joy in your heart. But that speaks directly to being open to the plethora of possibilities, the infinite possibilities that the universe has in bringing you what it is you want. Bringing you what it is, Spirit just said, what it is that is in true alignment with your soul. That is what matters here. That's the point. It's not about what your ego says is right or wrong. It's what is in true alignment with your soul and your life path and your mission. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what it looks like on the, on the surface. So I say that to say, if you've had a situation with someone that was really rough and really tumultuous and you know you two parted ways and you both went off and you did your own work and you did your own healing and 
you end up crossing paths, crossing paths with each other as completely different people, new, renewed, fre refreshed, reborn. Phoenix is from the ashes risen, if you will. And you end up rekindling a relationship. So what if other people around you are saying, are you crazy? Don't you remember? Yeah, bitch. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yes, of course I remember what happened in the past. But we're both different now. I really apologize for saying that. <laughs> that literally just came out <laughs> and I feel terrible about it. But but like you get what I'm saying, right? Like that, that that of course, how dare you? Of course I remember. You don't think we've talked about that? You don't think that was the first thing on my mind when I first ran into this person again? But you see, that's where the lesson in unconditional love comes into play. Because, yes, you remove yourself from, or you remove people from your life that are toxic, right? But you love them enough to know that they have the opportunity to change should they take it. And if they do take that opportunity to change, there is absolutely nothing wrong with reconnecting with them. Why? They're no longer toxic. People have the ability and the right to change. Of course, they need to be able to, they need to choose to do it on their own and they need to do their own work. But you're doing it, right? So why couldn't they? And it's not even about sending them energy to do so. It's not about... Um, praying that they, you know, they'll quote, wake up or shape up or whatnot. It's about saying, all right, cool. I'm just gonna go off in this direction and, f and focus on myself. And whatever happens, happens. Complete detachment, just letting go. But being completely detached is saying, if is being okay with the fact that if this person should change and we reconnect, maybe there is a chance for us. That is true disconnection. That is true detachment. Being okay with the situation regardless of the outcome. Okay? I think that's it. Yeah. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Keep in mind, I will be doing happy hour tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please go ahead. If you would like to get on the list, send payment, and I will put you on there, yeah? Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Happy spring, and it's Aries season. Oh, my God, I can't believe I didn't say that in the beginning. Happy Aries season. Yay! All right, I love you guys. And I will catch you... If I don't see you this evening, I'll see you tomorrow for our weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.